Shalom guys, welcome back to another episode here at Yeshav U Ministry with Casa de Israel. Yara. I thank you again for being there. Like I always say, if you like the content that we have in our channel, like and subscribe. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, put them in the comment section down below. So, this week's two abortion is very interesting. Uh, and it starts off with the Sabbath. And it's very important because we have seen that last week, right, in Torah portion, a lot of things have happened. Right, The, the sin of the golden calf. Uh, Moses breaks the, the tablets, he drops them and they break. Judgment comes upon the, the people that have sinned with the golden calf. Uh, there's a ransom that has to be paid for those sins. And now we have a renewed, uh, if you want to say tablets, and a renewed covenant uh, to an extent. And now Moses is going to basically present the instructions that he had received from other night. He was supposed to do that last week, but hence he finds himself uh, in the middle of the community waiting for him. Ended up saying, we can't wait no longer. We're going to create an idol and we're going to sin against uh, Adonai. Now, they did it with the intention of worshiping Adonai, but obviously they went against the first command that they were given. So this week's store portion opens up very interestingly with the Sabbath. But before we get into that, let's do the Torah blessing. Bless Adonai who is blessed. Bless Adonai who is blessed now and forever. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, sovereign of the universe, who has chosen us from among the peoples and has given us the Torah. Blessed are you, Adonai, who gives the Torah. Amen. So, like I said, this week's Torah starts in chapter 35, verse 1. It's uh, all the way to chapter 38. Uh, and so, uh, it's the opening of what Adonai commanded Moses. So now he's presenting this to the leaders so that it can be, obviously, uh, implemented. Adonai, uh, Adonai has chosen Moses to be the messenger, and the people have chosen Moses, Moses to be the messenger for them. Uh, and what Adonai wants him to do and wants him to present to the people. Okay, so we're going to start with this week's reading and then we'll continue. It says the following. Vayechel Moshe et Chal Adat Bnei Yisrael Vayomer Elechem Ele Chadbarim Asher Ziva Adonai Lahash Otam. And in English, it says the following. Then Moses assembled all the congregation of the sons of Israel. And he said to them, These are the things that the Lord has commanded you to do. For six days work may be done. But on the seventh day you shall have a holy day. A Shabbat of complete rest to the Lord. Whoever does any work on it shall be put to death. You shall not kindle fire in any of your dwellings on the Shabbat day. Then Moses spoke to all the congregation of the sons of Israel saying, These is the thing which the Lord has commanded saying take from among you a contribution to the lord whoever is willing of heart let him bring it as the lord com uh, as the lord contribution gold silver bronze and blue purple scarlet material fine linen goat's hair ram skin uh, dye red and porpoise skin acacia wood and oil for the lighting and spices for the anointing oil for the fragrant incense and onyx stones and setting stones for the effort of the breast peace. Let every skilled man among you come and make all the Lord has commanded. The tabernacle is the tent and its covering and its hooks and its boards and its bars and its pillars and its sockets and the ark and its poles, the mercy seat and the curtain screen, the table of its poles and all its utensils and the bread of presence, the lampstand also for the light and its utensils and its lamps and its oil for light. And the altar of incense and its poles and the anointing oil and the fragrant incense and the screen for the doorway and the entrance of the tabernacle and the altar of burnt offerings and its bronze grating and its poles and its all its utensils and basins and its stand, the hanging of courts and its pillars and its sockets and the screens for the gate of the court, the pegs of the tabernacle and the pegs of the court and their cords, the woman garments for ministering in the holy place, the holy garments for Aaron and the priest, and the garments for his sons to minister as priest. So, as we see, is a detail, step by step, of what Adonai has already told Moses. 
right? And this is what Moses was supposed to do when he came down from the mountain, right? Because everything we have read is very important that now is a transition, right? And in the Hebrew, when you read it in Hebrew, the differences that are made in the previous chapters to these chapters is based on how Adonai speaks to Moses, and then how Adonai says, and this you shall do. And this is what Adonai said. And so that is the difference, basically, right? Adonai speaking directly to Moses. And now Moses speaking directly to the sons of Israel. And the interesting thing about all of this is that Moses repeats everything how he was commanded. And he instructs everybody to do it as he was commanded. This is a very uh, important thing because the message never uh, becomes a... a tainted right he delivers exactly what he was commanded he doesn't change anything for his own uh gain or for his own uh preference or his opinion or he never got creative with the message now it's very interesting because the the way that it is structured right many scholars uh might say that this was a a, a mistake or a copy right of what was already said but the literary structure of the ancient Near East is very similar to what uh, is being presented here, right? In where you see in Canaan uh, stories of uh, the gods giving their direct message on how they want things to be built and structured. And then there is a document right after that, which explains to you how it came to be and how it detail by detail it was constructed. And so we're going to read a little bit about that in the Sundervan. Um, and the Sunderman is a very important resource uh, that I personally use um, for what they were commanded. Now, it says, this is what the Lord has commanded. Uh, chapter 35, verse 4. It says, Moses has, was, uh, has received a series of commands from Yahweh. And now he takes these instructions for the people and delivers them as Yahweh's messenger. This recitation of Yahweh's commands is an integral part of a series of events described in the tabernacle narrative that appears to find a parallel, right? A similarity of events from the Baalu myth, right? Which contains an account of the building of a place for the God Baal, right? So when we say parallels, we're not saying that God took from the Baal narrative and implemented it into himself. We're just saying, we're understanding that culturally, in that time, people around the ancient Near East, around Israel, had similar stories. And so, when Israel had their narrative, and when Israel explained their God, and they demonstrated their faith and belief, Adonai gave them their narrative, which started in Genesis, right? In the beginning. But now... The way that everything was created was heavenly ordained and revealed to Moses and now is being basically perpetuated to the people of Israel so that they can make it come to life. And what elements and who were going to perform certain steps and certain uh, functions. Okay, now it says here, this portion of the Ugaritic text follows a sequence that also appears in Exodus. First, there's a set of commands regarding the building of a dwelling place for a divine presence given by the deity to a messenger, right? So a direct, direct communication. The messenger goes to the ones to receive the commands. The messenger repeats the commands. Materials for the buildings are collected. Skilled craftsmen are designated to carry out the work. Extra building materials arrive and the construction of the dwelling place is carried out. Right? This biblical narrative has not borrowed this order of events from the Ugaritic text. Rather, both appear to be utilizing a sequence that is characteristics of an ancient literature describing the construction of a divinely ordained sacred space. Exodus 35 40 recounts the fulfillment of instructions given to Moses in Exodus chapter 25 verse 31. Much of the, this fulfillment section repeats or restates passages from the instruction section which was before this may be this may seem odd and you know why must there be so much repetition was it not one version enough one plausible answer is that the entire section in exodus devoted to the tabernacle which is chapters verse 25 to 31 and verse 35 to 40 is based in part on a particular literary pattern describing the building of a divine uh divinely sanctioned shrine in ancient near east one feature of this 
pattern was this requirement that the building be described after an account of the preparation before the dedication ceremonies. The text in Exodus does indeed describe the tabernacle structure and after it recounts the preparation made and, the, and before the ceremony is described in Exodus 40. But does Exodus fail to follow the pattern when it describes the tabernacle and its contents both in the instruction section and in the fulfillment section? The biblical text may in fact be following a known variation of this literary pattern. This variation is revealed in some degree in the Ba'lu myth of Ugarit. It is further revealed by the inscriptions from the reign of the old Babylonian king, Zamzuluna, the son of the successor Hammurabi. The inscription contains a command issued by the god Samash to the king to rebuild and restore the temple of Samash known as Ebar. It reads in part as follows. He commanded me by his mouth, which will not be altered, to build walls of Sibar the ancient city, his holy city, to return the temple, and bar to its place, to raise the head of the ziggurat, his lofty guru, like the heavens to cause the deities Samash and Aya to enter their abode, pure in happiness and in joy. I raised the walls of Zippar like a great mountain. I restored Ebar and I raised the heads of ziggurat, his lofty genun. Like the heavens, I caused the, the deities Samash and Aya and Adad, to enter their abode, pure in happiness, and joy, and restore to Ebar its good Lamazu. Like Exodus, this text repeats a fulfillment section of what was stated earlier in the instruction section. Thus, it is not simply the words of the biblical text, but also the literary form adopted by the narrative that conveys the nature of the structure to be built. Moses, it's very interesting that Moses, as he enters, as he enters the congregation and he is going to speak to the elders of Israel, uh, if we pay attention to the reading, the, the, the command of the Shabbat was given towards the end uh, of the instructions of the tabernacle. And Moses opens up the presentation, right? Because remember, now Moses is presenting uh, this to the community and to the leaders. He's saying the Shabbat day is holy. And it's very important because it's just a standard over any other day of the week and of any, anything that they are about to do, right? Because they're going to build the dwelling place of the creator but before we do that we have to understand that there is a stay a holy day a sacred space that Adonai wants us to revere and it's the very first step that is given to the people before they build the tabernacle he says the seventh day is holy to Adonai no work shall be done and no fire shall be kindled and then the instruction follow after that okay and then we see how Moses is respectfully given the instructions word for word and like i said the differences in in the hebrew uh are is are are the the contextual words that are used meaning adonai spoke to moses and then how moses spoke to the people right that is the only difference in the chapters from before from kititza and taruma to the chapters in vayechel and pekude for next week Right, these instructions are delivered step by step the way that I commanded Moses, and it's very important because, in an essence, Adonai wants us to see that comparing nations and comparing uh, narratives of ancient Near Eastern cultures and how their societies were built based on uh, mythological beings, cosm cosmological stories, Israel is living proof that they follow the true living God. And the only way that they're able to manifest uh, this presence is if they obey, right? If, they're, if they are willing to stick to the plans and the structure and the commands that Adonai gives, they're able to sustain his presence and sustain the promises of the covenant and the blessings to an extent. Because if they don't, which they didn't, then you never see the manifestation of what is promised. Because you never let Adonai manifest himself in your life. And this is what Adonai is trying to give to Moses. He's trying to give to the people. is the instructions that will guide you and guide your life and help you structure in a way that God can manifest himself through you and in your presence and in, in your community. Now... 
not necessarily would you hear Adonai's voice audibly and say to you, hey, Alejandro or Matias, which are one of my youth. Uh, you're not going to hear maybe, maybe you can, maybe not. But the idea that Adonai wants is for them to understand that as long as they follow these steps and as long as they follow this structure and these boundaries and they maintain themselves in those boundaries and they don't get too creative, then his presence will be there and they will be able to see it. And it's very different, right? Because today we live by faith and we, us in this time, we have to live by faith that all these uh, stories that people think are, um, uh, how do you say, fairy tales are real. Right? And by faith, we're supposed to structure our life morally and spiritually so that Adonai can manifest himself in our lives and we can give testimony of his uh, existence. And, and in a case, it is harder now because we haven't seen the Red Sea part and we haven't seen the cloud and the pillar, but we have the faith that uh, Yeshua, our Messiah, died and resurrected and was resurrected by his father. Um But the, the element that Israel is going to be missing in this whole journey that we will review again and again is the element of not only lack of faith, but the lack of acting upon that faith. And not only lacking faith and acting upon the faith, but acting upon that faith which is given by Adonai, meaning Adonai gave instructions and your faith is upon that. Not other, no other designs or no other ideas, and it's hard, right? But Moses demonstrates to us that one, the Shabbat is important, it's holy. No work shall be done because we hear, we listen to Adonai's word, we hear to the instructions, at least in our time. But in that moment, Moses told them Shabbat is holy, and then he step by step described how Adonai wanted things, everything to to be constructed, and they follow that blueprint. And his presence, as we will see next week, was manifested in that tabernacle. And the only reason why that was manifested is because they obeyed Elohim's structure. So this week's Torah portion opens up and Moses assembled the congregation. He assembled the community and he instructed them on Adonai's will. And as long as the Community follow God's will. yod heh -Vah will. His presence was manifested in the camp. Let's do our best to continue to do this. To continue to build this community. To continue to build our families, our congregations. And as long as we're seeking yod heh -Vah will, his presence will be manifested. And no matter what men can do in our times, wars, uh, disputes, We have faith that there is a higher power that is going to manifest himself and his presence will be felt. So I hope that this was a blessing to you, my young peoples, to your families, parents. Read the Torah portion. Take your time. Short. And I hope that you guys have a great week. Also, download the app. The CIY app is on Apple uh, and Android. I'll be putting the link. I'll be putting the video as we speak on one of these sides. Uh, follow us there. Subscribe to the channel. Um, and thank you for the support. Like I always tell you, I uh, hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful week. A wonderful Shabbat. Uh, again, thank you. Shavuot Tov. And Shabbat Shalom.